Army. Success. One of our aircraft is missing tonight at 7 and 9 on 48. That was really fun, but I must tell you, I'm glad I don't have a, a, a pet dog or cat at home because I've seen what happens when they pick up the scent of a wild cat. They go crazy for a week. It's bad enough that I covered with uh, cheetah fur, but I don't mind a bit. That animal really sheds, and he was delightful. Again, we thank Marine World for sending the animals down here. We hope to have them back very soon with three other animals to delight you and, and uh, educate you about these wild animals and Marine World. Our next guest is Richard Alexander, who's an attorney with the Bocardo, am I pronouncing that correctly? Bocardo right. Law Firm in San Jose. And you have put together a book called Rape Crisis, which was, I guess, commissioned by or asked for by the Santa, Santa Clara Bar Association. That's right. It was a, uh, a project that was requested through a uh, rape uh, task force that uh, has been working in Santa Clara County for the past several years. And as the chairman of the Criminal Justice Advisory Board, I was contacted by that group to see if we could offer some help and at the same time was a member of the Board of Trustees of the Santa Clara County Bar Association. And the end result was that a, a committee was, began to do some work and the uh, final product was a, a book on rape victims' rights. All right. Let, let, when, before we get into just what's in the book, let me ask you just about rape in general. How, how big a problem is it? How prevalent is it? The statistics are really questionable because no one actually knows, but generally speaking, about one woman in ten will be sexually assaulted during her lifetime. One of the interesting aspects about sexual assault is that women speak to women about it. Very rarely do women talk to men about it. Uh, of the people watching your program right now, the women in the room will know or be related to someone who is a victim or almost a victim. But on the other hand, the men won't. And that's one of the uh, one of the things that needs to be changed is, in our society. Is, I was going to say, is that part of the reason why uh, not so many of them are reported? Is because you would be reporting them in most cases to men? That was a problem in the past. I don't think that's quite the problem today. Uh, I think generally speaking, there's still a reluctance to want to report rape. A rape victim oftentimes want to, wants to wait to decide whether or not, do I really want to be involved in this process? Do I want to have to talk to the police? Do I want to go to court? And one of the important things that rape victims need to know, and one of the things that's pointed out in rape crisis, is that it's very important to report rapes immediately. Immediately report a rape, preserve the evidence of the rape. The rape victim uh, initially wants to uh, go take a bath, clean up, mm -hmm. and per put mm -hmm. it out of your mind. And that's exactly the wrong thing to do. That's playing into the rapist's hand. Generally speaking, a rapist will commit more than one rape. So it's important to immediately call the police. It doesn't help to call the police in half an hour. Call them right away. Call the police and give them a description of the assailant, where's the car going, and uh, uh, what took place. So they'll, the police will know uh, what they can do to, uh, to deal with the crime. Uh, of, of the rapes that occur that we know about, how, how many is it estimated are reported? About uh, what, a very low percentage? It's hard to one say. It's, it's something like one in three are actually reported. One in three or one in four, I think reported. I've read. But yeah. there's some other interesting statistics about rape. And the fact is that most of uh, the common misconception is that rape is a sexual crime, when in fact it's strictly a violent crime that's carried out through sexual means. And the rapist, and knows his victim approximately 70% of the time, according to one, uh, oh, really? one commentator. Another commentator says that uh, one third to 40% of all women know their victim. And it's not, it's not at all un, uh, unfounded to, uh, to, especially with younger women, for uh, the rapist to be an acquaintance. Acquaintance rape is a, so especially with teenagers and school children, is, uh, is very, very common. So the, the rape that is depicted a lot on, on, on film, where you're snatched bodily off the street or something while you're on your way home from the grocery store, is, is that's more the exception than the rule? That is the complete exception. The, that the rapist, happen. a rapist will plan a rape, and will have preconceived notions about how the rape will occur and how it's going to take place. We'll pick out a particular victim and we'll follow that victim. We'll make sure that uh, he knows where that victim lives and when, where, where's the car parked and what time does she go to work, what time does she come home. So it's not just uh, no, spur it's of not, the moment. No, it's not. A, and it's not a sexual crime. It's not one that's driven by, uh, by sexual what, needs. What's the, well, what's, what is the motivation in, for a rapist? Do we know enough about to... Uh, Interestingly, we know, some, we know a lot more uh, now than we did 10 years ago. Generally speaking, the rapist is fighting back. He's, uh, he's upset with women in his life, women who've dominated him, who've given him, uh, have forced his life in certain directions, and he's going to reach out and fight back. And he's going to terrorize and brutalize the victim as one way of uh, getting back at the women who've, uh, 
who have been unfair to him in the past. So he's, he's not necessarily getting back at that particular woman, but he's getting back at women in general. Very much so. And the interesting thing about the television and the film version of rape is that uh, uh, it happens on kind of a random basis, when in fact the, this particular rapist is usually has picked out a victim that fits his view of the women that he wants to get back at. All right. We'll take a short break and be right back. Phone number 575-1616 if you'd like to call in and discuss rape. Come home tense and sore with tired muscles and an aching back. Get into the amazing Craftmatic adjustable bed. The Craftmatic bed adjusts automatically to any position. Watch TV, read and write for hours in fantastic comfort. Then turn on the deep penetrating heat and massage. Just touch these buttons. Instantly you will feel gentle massage flow through your body, helping ease away minor aches and pain, while simultaneously warm, comforting heat soaks into tired muscles and sore joints. This wonderful bed can help temporarily relieve lower back pain, rejuvenate sore feet, makes you feel absolutely great. Feel better and sleep better in the Craftmatic Adjustable Bed. Get all the exciting facts about this marvelous bed by return mail. For a free booklet by mail, call toll-free 800-228-3600. 800-228-3600. The call and information by mail are completely free. Absolutely no obligation. 800-228-3600. Talking with Richard Alexander, an attorney from the Bacardo Law Firm in San Jose, and we're discussing rape. Uh, Richard mentioned that one out of ten women in her lifetime will be s w raped? Sexually assaulted or attempted rape. They'll what, be a victim. What's, what's the definition of rape, the legal definition the of legal rape? The legal definition of rape is being changed presently, but it's, it's generally uh, looked upon as sexual intercourse without consent. Many people that covers a big gamut. I mean, that, Exactly. Uh, it's, it's generally referred to as, uh, as common sexual intercourse. It doesn't involve any other kinds of... Uh, sexual stimulation. Now you well, those are different all right. legal categories. You, you mentioned that in, in the majority of cases the, the two people, the rapist and the, 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 rapist and the victim, the victim. Uh, do know each other. I, I would imagine maybe a classic case would be the, the date where he thinks she's led him on and then she says no at the end of the evening. And well it's not quite that not, simple but oh, it's, all, okay. it's all too uncommon to, uh, to talk to teenage victims who find themselves in a situation where there's been some, dan uh, some drinking and also uh, some close physical contact and then it gets carried away and the victim at that point in time is just unable to say no and finds herself in a situation where she's unwilling to, s it's difficult for her to separate herself from, uh, from the actual attack. And that's not at all uncommon with, uh, with older women who are attacked as well. Uh, very often the rape victim is not thinking very clearly when the rape is occurring. And that's why it's important if you think you're going to be the victim of a sexual assault to begin thinking creatively as to what you can do to avoid this rape. Oh, all right, let's, let's get into that because I, the, the rule of thinking used to be that if you felt you were going to be the victim of a rape that you just were fairly passive about it because you were maybe in fear of your life uh, and so you know you just go along with it and, and that was the lesser of, of two evils. That's no longer the theory, is it? If there's a gun or a knife, that's well, right. obviously okay. the thing to do. But it's important to keep in mind that most rapists have a preconceived notion as to what the victim is going to do or should do. Uh, I've spoken with rape victims who've avoided the attack by engaging in rather bizarre uh, behavior, by, by urinating, lying on the ground, eating grass, uh, encouraging the rapist, encouraging the oh, rapist oh. by saying, uh, I had one client who was a, uh, walking out of a dance and a fellow came up to her and said uh, that he was going to take her away and she said, well, I've been looking at you all evening, that's a good idea. She went back inside and excused herself to get her coat and called the police. As it turned out, the fellow was a, a rapist who had committed prior acts, he had a gun, the police were looking for him. Oh. She was very, very lucky. Yeah, very lucky, I was going to say. That was kind of a risky thing for her to do. But, but she it, was thinking creatively, and that's the important thing to do. All right, so you, it, no longer, the passive is not the way to go. You should, you should fight, scream, uh, scratch whatever you can do to get screams away from are, screams are the most effective form of defense All right. uh, it's often helpful not to call for the police uh, just call for fire uh, generally fire, speaking yeah. the sociologists say that uh, a fire call is responded to much more uh, quickly by the general public it, it's my impression and I might be wrong but that that not that many rapists are ever one caught or two convicted and sent to prison and of those that are they aren't in prison very long and it would seem to me that that would 
that would deter a lot of women from even getting involved in reporting the rape because they might fear retribution. Or There's some big changes in, the, in our, right. our, our criminal justice system that I think need to be talked about. Okay. One is that rapists are being, uh, being sentenced to, to long terms today. The uh, California Penal Code provides for terms of three, six, and eight years. In addition, a, uh, further years can be added on if a weapon is used in the course of a rape. And the important thing to know today is that our, all of our police departments throughout Santa Clara County and throughout the Bay Area uh, provide sexual assault investigating teams who are sensitive to the needs of rape victims. Rape victims should also keep in mind that there are a number of uh, rape crisis hotlines that are available to provide them with important counseling and to provide counselors who will remain with them throughout a criminal prosecution. You mean from the beginning through the court and everything? From the, from the time that uh, a rape victim first uh, presents herself to uh, uh, the local hospital for a medical exam, which will normally be at the expense of the police department, uh, she can arrange to have a rape crisis counselor right there, a person who's been trained, who's worked with other victims, who can begin to explain uh, the kinds of feelings and reactions and that a, that a victim will have, because those are ex extraordinarily significant, who understands the catastrophe that accompanies the rape in terms of the psychological damage mm -hmm. that occurs, and who also understands the criminal process, how the courts work, and furthermore, will provide background and support to that victim uh, so that not only the victim, but the significant people in that victim's life will have uh, good advice as to how to help that victim through this very difficult time. Plus, also, uh, rape crisis counselors are aware of the availability of, of third-party lawsuits, civil suits, in which an individual can obtain compensation for the injury that they've suffered, because rape and the aftermath of rape is an emotional disaster. So it's a true is, catastrophe. This is beyond the criminal uh, court case. You can still civilly, you can still retain an attorney and, and sue the rapist. That's for right. One of the things about our, our criminal justice system is that our district attorneys res represent the people of the state of California in prosecuting a crime. Unfortunately, in rape, the victim is the chief witness. The, the criminal case is not prosecuted for the benefit of the victim, it's prosecuted for the benefit of the state. Whereas a civil lawsuit to obtain damages or a, an application to the state of California to obtain damages uh, for uh, as a result of being a victim of a crime uh, is something that is definitely for the benefit of the victim. Uh, the aftermath of rape can be really uh, severe. Uh, lost time from work, extensive medical injuries. We were talking about television in, in the film version yes. of rape. Yeah. Most rapes are, are exceptionally violent. There is attached with them a gross physical injury. Well, that goes along with the TV connotation. They well, always have it on TV. It's always very violent. But you don't see the injuries. You don't window. see the injuries. People True. hit with tire irons, uh, oh. fractured skulls, mm. lacerations to their body. And, uh, those are the things you don't see, but it's the things that the doctors see and, and that I as an attorney who's represented rape victims in the past have, uh, have seen. All right, now t take me through this from step one, because if we do nothing else today, we might be able to uh, encourage people who might become rape victims or maybe know of, of people in their family that have been already involved with a rape that went non-reported. Why it's important to report it and why they shouldn't have the same fears that I think uh, a lot of women do have. For example, if I were raped, I'm going to um, I'm going to worry about how the police are going to react. In other words, for for many years, I think the, the rape victims are made to feel guilty. That's not the case any longer. We know that rape is not a sexual crime. It's a crime that's carried out through sexual means. The victim doesn't bring it on herself. She's not responsible for it. She's a, she's as much a victim of a, of, of of a breaking and entering to her house as she is to a, being having her body broken and entered. What if I don't? What if I am a rape victim and I would not be able to identify the attacker? Then then I might figure, then what is the point of going through all of this if there's no chance at all that you're going to be able to catch this fella? It depends what you mean by identify. Uh, for a while in the East Bay, we had a, a rapist who had a particular odor. Yes, the, uh, stinky. Uh, yes. Right, exactly. Uh, other rapists will have other identifiable features. It may be their method of operation. Uh, a victim is in, right. at the time of a rape, is obviously not thinking clearly. So the fact so that the I don't have his name and address does not necessarily mean that I no. couldn't have some clues that the police might be able exactly. to track him down. And the important thing is to immediately call the police, give them a description, call a rape hotline, mm -hmm. don't destroy any evidence, don't take a bath, don't clean up the don't house. Don't do anything. Don't do anything. Wait until they get there, talk to the police, talk to a rape crisis counselor. They'll, tend you, they'll take you to a doctor or in a medical facility here in San Jose, be the Valley Medical Center, 
and in San Francisco, San Francisco General Hospital, and throughout the Bay Area, places where evidence can be collected and properly documented by physicians who are familiar with the needs of rape, rape victims. Uh, full medical examinations will be uh, provided at, at no cost to the victim. And will they and bring once in that, the... we, Excuse me, for yeah. one minute. Once all that information is collected, then a rape victim can later on, two, three weeks, a month later, calmly exercise a reasonable judgment whether or not she wants to go forward. That's the point in time oh, when right. you make a decision. All right, so you don't necessarily, the fact that you're calling a rape hotline or calling police does not necessarily mean that you have to go ahead and press charges. No. All right. But if you don't, then you can't. You'll never be able to in, in the future. Okay. Um, I want to ask you why it is California has, uh, I, I read some statistics prior to your visit. Alaska, California, and Nevada have the highest rape rates in the country. I don't know if you have an answer, but I'm certainly curious to know why it's more prevalent out here. Maybe it's the air or something, but I have to take a break first, so we'll do that. Be right back. We're talking Richard Alexander. The subject is rape. Coming August 15th, 6 a.m. to Tri-City, the world's largest sporting goods store. The impossible snow ski sale. Save up to 70% off on thousands of skis, boots, poles, bindings, parkas, bibs, vests, gloves, racks, and chains. All at impossibly low prices. Circle the date, Saturday, August 15th. You're invited. Meet the experts and get fitted by factory train technicians. Don't miss the blockbuster event of the year at Tri-City, the world's largest sporting goods store. Overnight campers welcome. Eight acres of free parking. Hey neighbor, it's here at last, the Santa Clara County Fair. So many things to see and do. Bring the family, bring friends too. See livestock auctions, rodeos, good food parades and big stage shows. Carnival rides for your delight and fireworks shining every night. Contest prizes to be won. There's daily fun for everyone. So come on neighbor, see you there. Come on down to the County Fair. Santa Clara County Fair, a family fair with a country fair. Appearing tonight at 8.30, Jan and Dean. Talking with Richard Alexander about rape, uh, we're going to mention in a minute uh, the book he's put together for the Santa Clara County Bar Association and how you can obtain a free copy. First of all, though, I want to ask you, I, I saw some statistics, I think it was out of the Almanac, where uh, the incidence of rape, reported rape at least, was incredibly high in Alaska, which I don't maybe it's because there aren't as many women up there or something and they're really in demand, which is a stupid thing to say, but I can't imagine why it's so much higher. And California and Nevada were very, were higher with Colorado, I think, fourth place. Is there any reason for that? The only reason that I can suggest is that, remember that when we're talking about reported rapes, yes, and there's a much greater sensitivity on the West okay. Coast, and there's a greater acceptance and greater understanding, not only by police departments and by the courts, uh, but also by, by lawyers and by just So we every, could say that people. those statistics are maybe a good sign, that, that, we, so. that we women in California at least are reporting them more often. Uh, maybe the incidence is, it, it, incidence is not higher, we're just reporting them more often. I don't think the guilt is associated with reporting a rape here because it's understood that it's a violent crime. It's not a sexual crime. It's just carried out through sexual means. Let me ask you quickly about television. Is it, uh, television, because this is such a common theme um, in many programs, uh, has it helped or hurt? Has, has, uh, maybe it's done both. I mean, it, it certainly has depicted it in not a true way, but on the other hand, maybe it's made us more aware of it, and maybe people are reporting it more often now because of television. What do you think? I'm not qualified to answer that. Well, it's real violent. I mean, you it's know. It definitely is violent. We know there's a high incidence of violence, uh, and we're training people to be violent, and we know that the good guys win because they're more violent than the bad guys. But, but you, uh, don't, you wouldn't think, personal opinion now, you wouldn't think that, that rape is on the increase because it, it is depicted as often as it is on television? I don't know. Don't know. Not even, a, not even a yes or no on an opinion I can't get out of you. All right, let's talk about civil suits. I, I wasn't even aware you could do that. Beyond the criminal case, and what about the civil suit? I've gone through the, do I have to win in court, in a criminal court, in order to be able to sue this guy in a civil court? No, you don't. The, uh, the, the burden of proof in a criminal case is a very high burden of proof. Uh, must be, a case must be proved by the district attorney beyond a reasonable doubt. But in a civil suit, uh, an attorney for a rape victim need only prevail by a preponderance of the evidence. That evidence, which is more convincing, has a more probability of truth. And that victim can obtain the, the compensation for the real injuries that she's, uh, she's suffered. Our courts uh, throughout the United States are, uh, are very sympathetic to rape victims. Uh, and our juries are, understand 
the true nature of the, the injuries, the psychological injuries that rape victims suffers and are, uh, are awarding uh, substantial awards what, what against of, victims. What against, kind of awards are we talking about against the rapist? Victim, uh, victims are obtaining awards of uh, upwards of a million dollars. Really? The important thing is you have to keep in mind that those people have suffered gross sure. traumatic yeah. injuries. And uh, those are actions that are not brought, uh, not against the rapist. Uh, normally the rapist is gone or is apprehended and is, uh, is without funds. But they're brought against those people who have set the condition for a rape, who, uh, who know that the apartment they rented was the place of a prior rape, mm -hmm. or where the security company mm -hmm. fails to take the proper precautions in a particular building. A third party who fails to warn or who sets a stage so that a rapist can commit a, a crime. This may seem like a self-serving question, but uh, from your standpoint, but w would it be recommended that anyone who has been involved in a rape um, seek civil damages if, if the rapist is known? You have to look at the, at the facts of each case, but one good thing to keep in mind is that today's rapist uh, may, be, may inherit some estate. You know, five or six years from now and be in a position to satisfy a judgment. A rapist uh, can be sued successfully. Many women are doing it. A, mm -hmm. a young woman in Chicago uh, took a case against a rapist who was locked in jail who had no resources but she, she took a verdict against him for uh, some five million dollars for the for the injury that she suffered. Now whether or not she'll ever be able to collect it I don't know but that's a, it's a common thing that's happening. You today. talk about preponderance of evidence. Um, what kind of evidence do we have to have? I mean it would normally be the victim's word against the rapist's word wouldn't it? Well, in need, addition, what else do you need? If you reported a rape immediately, that, that tends to prove that a rape occurred. All right. Also, the doctor, perhaps, uh, let's talk about a hypothetical case where the victim's taken to the Valley Medical Center. And in that case, the examining doctor there will have photographs of the injuries, will show the, exactly what, what this victim went through, whether any sutures, any stitching was needed, mm -hmm. uh, both uh, uh, photographs, all their, all their laboratory records would be available as well to prove the case. That would prove in that a, there was a rape. Now, that the, wouldn't necessarily prove that, uh, that you, that Joe Schmidt here or whatever his name might be is the rapist. Right, but you have to look at the facts of each case. We can look at uh, some of the evidence that, that's obtained in a, a medical examination and that can, that can establish identity. Mm -hmm. uh, hair, mm -hmm. uh, body fluids, and always, always be identified and help to prove that uh, this particular person was the rapist. All right, tell me about the book, Rape Crisis. What's in there? Why rape, should everybody have one? Rape Crisis is good uh, not only for, uh, for women to read and for mothers to share with their daughters and for teachers to share with uh, children in their classes, but also for, for men to, be, uh, to have an opportunity to look at as well. Because it explains not only uh, how rapes can be prevented, but it's, it explains the emotional aftermath of rape and what's been referred to as a rape crisis syndrome. Mm -hmm. The kinds of things that people generally go through. What role significant men play in the rape victim's life after the rape and how they can help a rape victim. And fathers, the, brothers, boyfriends. That exactly. Sort of uh, oftentimes, when, uh, when I've spoken with rape victims, the, uh, the significant man whether it's a husband or a brother or a father, uh, often feels very guilty and is also in need of counseling. And that's why it's important to obtain uh, assistance through a rape crisis center and to call a rape crisis center here in San Jose or uh, in Palo Alto or throughout the Bay Area uh, to provide this kind of background and help. Uh, I have a minute left and I want to ask you this. You just keyed on it. You said it, it tells you about how to prevent a rape. How, how does one quickly, how does one prevent a rape? common sense. Okay. Begin locking huh? doors and watching where you're going and don't present yourself as somebody who uh, appears that they could be easily mugged or easily attacked. Walk with, uh, with determination. If you're going to your car, put your keys in your hand and, and walk as if you know where you're going. And, and say no like get. you mean it, huh? Exactly. All right. Thank you very much, Richard. I don't believe we've, uh, have we given the address? If we haven't, I'll do it as soon as we get back to tell you how you can get the book, Rape Prices. We'll be right back to tell you about tomorrow's show. If you're an investor who's tired of being too late, too late when investments are heading up, too late when they're heading down, look, look ahead, look into Barron's. Every week, Barron's gives you page after page of useful investment information, days, weeks, even months ahead. Every week, 34 pages of market statistics, in-depth studies of companies, a dividends and earnings alert on all New York Stock Exchange and Amex stocks, exclusive analyses covering the whole world of investing. All you need to know not to be too late every week in Barron's.
If you call this number now, you can get 20 weeks of Barron's for just $21. Call right now, and you'll also get free Understanding Technical Forecasting, an informative booklet that shows you how professionals use Barron's. 20 weeks of Barron's plus this revealing booklet for only $21. Look ahead. Look into Barron's. Call 1-800-821-2280 now before it's too late. Our thanks to our guests today, Richard Alexander, Cecilia from the Marine World, and uh, Arthur, Joey, and Havoc, and uh, also our jet lag lady, Fran Grant. Uh, we enjoy bringing you information such as we have today. We enjoy bringing the animals, and we'll try and do that again just as soon as we can get three back from Marine World. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking, among other things, about how you can get a job. Um, a lot of people are out of work. There are certain techniques uh, which will help you get the same job that 5 or 10 or 15 other people are applying for. So we'll have an expert tomorrow to discuss that with you, how to get a job if you're out of work. Also, Chief of Police for San Jose, Joe McNamara, will be here talking again about crime. Rape, I'm sure we will touch on tomorrow as well, whether or not the police here are doing a good job in protecting you from criminals. And we'll also have back uh, the chairman of the Attorney's Coalition on Police Practices who will be discussing police brutality. Does it exist down here? And what do you do if it happens to you? All right, thank you again for watching today. We hope you'll join us tomorrow on Talk to the Town. See you then. While in San Jose, guests of Talk of the Town stay at the San Jose Hyatt. Plants courtesy of Spirited Greenery of Santa Clara.